You work for Radio Liberty. I worked for Radio Free Europe in the early 1990s, so we are colleagues in a way. For some time, it felt a little strange, because you write or say something you find true, but society is not changing. On the contrary, the wrong tendencies are getting stronger. Sometimes we were told reproachfully that it is easy to talk about such things on a radio sponsored by the US Congress. Do you feel that working for Radio Liberty and speaking about Belarus makes sense? I think a lot has changed since the 1990s. A lot has changed since the 1950s when Radio Free Europe was launched. Attitude to the West has changed, especially among the Belarusian youth. The youth loves the US, the West. There is no such an attitude that they are financed by the US so they are propagandists. This is used by Lukashenko's propaganda and Russia to discredit us. After the publication of articles, investigations, fact-checking materials, they say, of course they found it because Trump, Obama, Bush ordered them to do it. I think it harms, but also helps, because the reputation Radio Free Europe has, and which hasn't been stained during 70 years of existence, makes people believe that this organization is stable. We don't seek to be first as news aggregators, tabloids. We take another 10, 15, 20 minutes to check facts to the extent it is possible in Belarus. We are probably the only medium which checks information from two independent sources before publishing it in social media. An interesting fact is that for a lot of young people, Radio Free Europe is first of all a Facebook, VK and Twitter page. They do not remember Radio Free Europe as radio because they haven't seen videos or articles, but they have seen our posts. Many young people in Belarus associate posts or live streams with Radio Free Europe. They have no idea that Radio Free Europe was established at the times of Cold War. Maybe it is even for the better. It also happens that American Radio Free Europe is a shield for our journalists and contributors and for our sources. When they are thinking whom to give information, they usually give it to us. There has been a scandal recently. Activists of modern Belarusian Komsomol, called BRSM, made people join this organization by threatening them with being expelled from school and fired from work if they wouldn't join. They recorded a video of how a teacher talks to them and sent it to our Facebook page. This video has had 1.5 million views and has become the most popular in our history, in the history of Belarusian Radio Free Europe. Radio Free Europe, in our case, became a digital trendsetter which works with user-generated content sent by people. And if you take a look what we do now and what you did in the 1990s, these are two different things. Thank God.